96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. Two things happened uh, yesterday that came together to make me wonder. Um, the one thing was, it was a new story about um, Amazon, something developing robots to live in our homes. And, and they showed a picture. They look like humans. All yeah. right. So robots will look like humans. I guess we saw that coming, right? And then I came to work and they were doing construction outside and the big cranes look like dinosaurs to me. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know what's going to happen? Uh, we're going to all go away and robots will be running the world and they will forget that there was ever these construction things and they'll be, you know, buried. And one day some robot guy is going to dig up a, a piece of construction and say, hey, there they were dinosaurs. Right, right. And they'll, they'll reconstruct <laughs> it and put it together and put it in a museum. Um, Steve Brissat, hopefully you found that a little humorous. Uh, Steve is on the phone. <laughs> he is the author of the book called The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of a Lost World. I cannot wait to talk to him. I want to brag about it a little bit. The book is number one in many categories on Amazon. Of course, it's number one in the dinosaur category, number one in the paleontology category, number one in the fossils category, and number one in biological science of dinosaurs category. That is pretty impressive right there, right off the bat. And, and uh, it's just an amazing book and an amazing topic. And that's because I'm still a kid, Robin. <laughs> I, th I think so. Um, uh, good morning, Steve Brissett. You are an amazing guy yourself. Listen to this. Paleontologist at the University of Edinburgh, a resident uh, paleontologist for BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs program, a contributor to Scientific American and Science and Nature, and I'm taking all of his time. Good morning, Steve. It's an honor to have you on our show. Good morning. Hey, thanks for the great PR there. Oh, my God. You're really buttering up the book. I love it. Oh, no, no. That's, that's what it wonderful. really is. Did you know you were number one in all those categories? <laughs> You know, I, I shouldn't admit it, but of course I'm obsessively checking Amazon because <laughs> we just released the book. Yeah. So I'm so curious to see what readers are thinking of it, and um, I'm, I'm just I'm glad that you like it. It was a lot of fun writing it and you know telling the story of dinosaurs for adults. There are so many books for kids about dinosaurs. This is for adults. Do you know, I remember as a kid, I went to the Museum of Natural History in New York City. We had a field trip. And the, the teacher, or whoever it was, was talking about dinosaurs, and there was a sound thing. And I said, how do we know that's what they sounded like? How do we know what color they were? How do we know they didn't have hair? All these questions from a little kid, you know. But do we? And, and now, lately, I've been seeing that we've, we're getting answers that maybe explain a lot of what we know, right? Absolutely. This is the most exciting time in the history of dinosaur research. Somebody is finding a new dinosaur species on average once a week these days. Really? 50 some new species a year. Wow. It's incredible. It's people all over the world, men and women, especially young people looking for dinosaurs. So there's a lot of new discoveries, but also a lot of new technology is being used to study dinosaurs. Right. And we are learning things that we used to think we're impossible, like what color dinosaurs are. Yeah, I don't know how you know, but I, I, I saw something the other day that a dinosaur was found with its skin uh, p uh, preserved somehow. Mm -hmm. that, that, I don't know if that tells Interesting. you. Interesting. Isn't that amazing to you? It is. It, it, it's incredible what we have as fossils. These fossils are clues. They're clues to vanished worlds. And each one, whether it's a bone, it's a, a skeleton, it's a tooth, it's skin, it's a feather, it's a footprint, they can tell us something new about dinosaurs. And then when we can study them with CAT scanners and with high-powered microscopes and yeah. with computer yeah. animation software, yeah. we can just learn so much about what they were like as real animals. You've also uh, explored the, their intelligence realm. Were they smart? That's right. That's right. And this is one of the great new revelations. You know, I'm not that old. I'm in my mid-30s now. Uh, and w But when I was in school, not that long ago, really, I don't think, in the late 80s and throughout the 90s, uh, all the textbooks that we had, they always portrayed dinosaurs as these dumb animals, these very boring, grab, uh, you know, gray, drab, brown-colored creatures just right. hanging around right. waiting to go right. extinct. And these books would often say, we'll never really know what colors they are. We'll never really know how smart they are. Well, now we know that some dinosaurs were really, really smart. And we know that from cat scanning. We can cat scan their skulls. Really? We can reconstruct their brains. And wow. we can see that a lot of them, like T-Rexes, had really big brains. They were probably about as smart as dogs were on average. Really? Oh, my God. That's scary. 
Uh, uh, so, 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 is there anything alive right now that could be technically considered a dinosaur? Yes, yes. So today's birds are dinosaurs. Birds are true dinosaurs. Birds evolved from dinosaurs, and that makes them dinosaurs. The same way bats are a weird type of mammal that evolved the ability to fly, uh -huh. birds are weird dinosaurs that develop flight. And we know that. We, it's not just a guess. We actually know it because we have thousands of fossils of dinosaurs, their bones covered in feathers. So, so when I'm looking at the cover of the book, and of course it looks like the dinosaurs I've seen all my life, except for the fact that T-Rex looks like he's got hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's this beautiful illustration. I love the cover of the book. There's a great artist called uh, Todd Marshall, who, who's from Idaho, that, that did the illustrations. And his T-Rex is mangy looking. It is. It's colorful and it's mangy looking. And that's yeah. because we know that tyrannosaurs had feathers, simple feathers. They didn't have wings, of course. I mean, that would be preposterous, a T-Rex with wings, but they did have simple, hairy-looking feathers covering their bodies, and that's why it looks the way it does on the cover. That's real. That's not just artistic license. And uh, you also have done your research through hands-on. You've, you've uh, trotted all over the globe. That's a big part of the fun of studying dinosaurs. It, it's, I, I think I'm the, really one of the luckiest people in the world to have this kind of job where I get paid to travel around, digging up dinosaurs, working with amazing people across the world, getting to go to China and Brazil and uh, Romania and Poland and all these incredible places. Wow. And we're always finding new things. I wow. mean, there is so much more to be found. This is not a dead science. These animals are old and extinct, but the science is really just getting started. And for all the, the younger generation out there, there's still a lot of dinosaurs to be found. We have a fun uh, conversation each morning with uh, one of the guys from the local uh, blood bank, and he, he has two sons. And, and at one point, that we, we've been talking to him for 15 years, so now his sons are teenagers. And at one point, he said, my sons are now past dinosaurs and into girls. So I, 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 and, I, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's true for all of us, right? We, we like dinosaurs, and all of a sudden, we say, you know what? Girls are more interesting than dinosaurs. At, le at least somebody like yourself went back to being interested in dinosaurs, right? <laughs> I did, I did, and in a crazy weird way, it was actually meeting my wife who <laughs> brought me to Scotland, where I now live and teach at the University of Edinburgh. I mean, I grew up around Chicago, oh, is that so right? I guess I found dinosaurs and girls at around the same time, and they both <laughs> brought me to this amazing part of the world. Oh, so, right. hey. uh, what do you think about the stories that we hear about scientists wanting to recreate the dinosaur species? I never like to say that anything's impossible. I think that's the worst thing a scientist could say because that closes our mind to discovering new things. But I think it is basically impossible to bring back a dinosaur just because DNA doesn't preserve as fossils. It starts to break down really quickly when an animal dies. And nobody has ever found even a tiny little piece of dinosaur DNA. And lots of people oh, have been really? looking. So I don't think it's going to happen, which I, I, I'm fine with. You know, dinosaurs had their time, and then they went extinct. We didn't cause them to go extinct. You know, they had their moments. Um, and I don't want a T-Rex chasing me down. I don't <laughs> want a T-Rex, you know, chasing your listeners down, down there in Florida, coming out of the swamp. You know, that's, come on. But maybe, maybe things like woolly mammoths, you know, extinct animals that died out not too long ago, things yeah, that you can yeah, still find yeah. frozen up in Alaska and Russia, maybe those things can be cloned. It's a maybe. fascinating world that you study. Uh, one quick question, if I could squeeze in one more. Um, when we look at a picture of dinosaurs, we imagine they all lived at one time. Is, is there like a vast number of years that, and in other words, could some species have been extinct while other species were just beginning? Yeah, yeah. The, dino the, the thing about the dinosaurs, they were an empire. They were an empire, and that's how we should think of them. And like, say, the Roman Empire, they weren't established in a day. You know, they had to rise up, and it took them a while to spread around the world and become dominant. But when they did, they were utterly dominant until they went out. They went extinct when they were at the top of their game. And I think there's a lesson in there for us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, my, maybe so. Um, wouldn't it be cool, though, if you, if you could have a dinosaur and he was as smart as a dog? And that means you could like, throw a bone and he'd run for it? I don't know. It's just... <laughs> 
<laughs> Fred Flintstone. <laughs> so, so it would just be so fun, wouldn't if it? If you want to watch that movie, right? <laughs> you know, you could you could do a trick too. You could throw it and then not really throw it, and he looks at you and looks at looks. Wait, hey, wait, wait, where did it go? Uh, Steve, I, I I love what you do. I'm still a kid at heart. Uh, so, do you live in Scotland now? I do. I live here in Scotland. I teach at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, it's a great place to study dinosaurs. We're finding a lot of new ones right here in Scotland. And I tell some of those stories of, of discovering dinosaurs here in the book. And I know we're getting close to the end, so I'll just say again, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs is the book. And it's on Amazon now. You yes. can order it uh, <laughs> or at your local independent bookshops. And I'm just really <laughs> excited now that we've just released it to see what people think. And I hope it will inspire a new generation of dinosaur hunters. Nicely said. Steve, thank you. Uh, thank you for being on the air. I have a copy of the book, by the way. If you want the copy that was sent to us, call me during the break and it's yours. Uh, Steve, thank you. We'll be right back. Ready for a caring and compassionate career? Home Instead Senior Care is looking for people that are driven to succeed, learn, and have a positive attitude. These caregivers become a part of our championship team, enhancing the lives of aging adults throughout Marion County. Home Instead Senior Care provides non-medical services that allow seniors to remain in their home and meet the challenges of aging with dignity, care, and compassion. For more information, call 352-414-1566. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352 629 2440. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352 629 2440, or online at Powell Gene, G E N E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Gene is a proud United States veteran. Direct connects to UCF where students who attend the College of Central Florida and graduate with an AA or articulated AS degree are guaranteed admission to the University of Central Florida. Success coaches are ready and waiting to assist you in designing an educational plan that is right for you in any of their locations across Central Florida. Remember, connecting is easy and guaranteed. Find out more at directconnecttoucf.com. Got an old car? You can donate it, whether it's running or not, to the United Breast Cancer Foundation and save a life. They'll even come and pick it up for free. The United Breast Cancer Foundation has saved hundreds of women's lives through their free or low-cost breast